surely there's contact. Hail, hail. Oh, what a move from the Costa. What else is to come on this phenomenal season that is Formula E? Welcome to beautiful Bern, Switzerland's de facto capital city. Now we've had electric street racing in this country before, but never here in this city. So there are a whole new set of challenges posed to our teams and to our drivers. Getting the decisions right on the day is going to be key on the 22nd of June when Formula E rolls into town for the fifth and final round of the Volst Alpina European races. We're going to go out on the electric skateboard and take a look at the circuit. Where I'm standing right now will be the start line on race day. Now there's a glaring difference with this start line to most others in that we're halfway up an incredibly steep slope. That's going to provide a slight challenge for the drivers or a slightly different procedure because on the start line they'll be sitting there normally just waiting to bury the throttle as the lights go green. Well here they'll have to have one foot on the brake of course stopping the car from rolling backwards. It won't provide a problem but just something a little bit different. The other thing about this starting grid is that at the moment We've got a central reservation in the middle of the road, so that's got to go too. At many of the circuits, we talk about these pedestrian crossings as providing a real challenge, particularly if it rains when the circuit becomes wet, how slippery the white or yellow painted lines can become. But here in Bern, very different. These zebra crossings here are actually really quite abrasive, so maybe they'd be quite good in a braking zone. Behind me you can see the downhill run towards the first complex of corners. It provides a big overtaking opportunity during the braking zone, but that braking zone also means there's a big opportunity to regenerate, to recuperate energy and put back into the battery during that braking phase. One of the big challenges is going to be getting the car stopped from what will be almost maximum speed down there into this incredibly slow and tight, almost hairpin-like corner, left-hander, where the cars will then feed off down one of the steepest hills anywhere on the Formula E calendar. I just can't overstate how steep this part of the lap is. It's like coming down the side of a mountain through here with twists and turns as well. It's going to be a dramatic part of the circuit, this one. Well, this will be the fastest point on this circuit at the end of this huge slope. And what makes this particularly tricky is that when they get to the bottom of this at maximum velocity, there's a corner right here before what will be the biggest braking zone on the circuit as well, right here. The guys have got to get the car slowed down to really slow speeds before they go through this very slow, tight, single file corner before they head back up the other side of this mountain. Well, even by Formula E standards, this is a first. At the exit of turn four, there's a bear pit. I mean, a, I mean a bear pit. That is incredibly steep. I think my skateboard might have finally met its match. Luckily though, our generation two Formula E cars have a lot more power and they will get up here easily. But one thing to keep an eye on is temperature within the electrical opponents inside the cars because having come down an incredibly steep hill where they've used regen under the braking phase to put energy back into the battery, they're then hard on the throttle to get back up here as fast as they can. And the electrical components inside the motor, the inverter, can all be subject to serious temperature issues, particularly if it's a hot day. So at the end of this incredibly big hill and then long straight down to this part here, there's a big stamp on the brake pedal to get the car turned into this tight, almost doubling back section before we head on around the lap. What's tricky about this place is though, when you're looking for the maximum amount of grip as you turn left, the circuit falls away from you, cambered in the opposite direction to the way you want it, inducing understeer, almost encouraging the car to push on when all you want as a driver is for it to grip and turn in and head on around the corner. So the final sector of this lap then begins with this tricky little slow complex of right angle corners. Very difficult to overtake through there. But then we come out here back onto the start straight, that long straight where the whole lap began. But just look at the things we've got to contend with. Lumps and bumps like we have on all city centre street circuits. But look at the camber of the road here, how it arches in the middle. That means that coming through this corner on one side of that arch, you've got grip. Step over the centre line though, and the circuit profile wants to throw your car out towards the exit. Well, what goes up must come down and the final part of the lap just falls away towards the finish line down there, pit lane entry on the right hand side and a left hand turn at the bottom to restart the next circulation. But in the middle of all that will be a really tricky chicane right here behind me where getting the car stopped at the end of this slope is going to be really difficult and could either win or lose you quite a lot of lap time. 
So in a country famous for chocolate, cheese, but also its Swiss watches, it's gonna be the stopwatch that decides who's king when it comes to the 22nd of June. It's a beautiful circuit, but it's also an incredibly tricky and challenging circuit as well. Could be an exciting way to finish the Volsterpina European races of 2019. Yeah.